everyone welcome to this gpd pilot demo video uh, so i'm super happy to to present to you our vs code extension so basically this is the first ai developer within your vs code so gpd pilot doesn't do autocomplete or like help you write prs but it actually does the actual coding in a sense that it can write code it can debug it it can ask you as a developer it can ask you questions so anyway, in this video, I actually am going to create with GPT Pilot a full, fully featured application. Uh, the whole logic is basically comparing GitHub repositories, uh, basically the same as uh, Star History website, but this one has like a all like full features of an application, like authentication, a mailing, like you know login, register, email verification, password reset, and all these different features. And in reality, it took me like two hours to, to create all this. So in this video, I'm actually going to uh, just go through the through the main uh, points. I'm just going to narrate, narrate over it. And I'm going to leave the full video somewhere in the comments or in the description or somewhere around here. So anyway, let's let's dig into it. All right. So when you start creating an application with GPT Pilot, obviously, first you need to add a project name. And after that, what you need to do is you need to describe what kind of an application are you going to build. And in this video, I'm actually going to just build the first like authentication. And then later on, I'm going to show you how to add new features and the whole logic of the star history will be implemented afterwards just by telling GPT Pilot, hey, I want this kind of a logic on the home page. So after you write the description, it's going to ask you a couple of questions just to clarify, to be sure what is this project about. Then it's going to list out the technologies, which is it's going to be used. We're going to use Node.js and Mongo. And after it, it's going to start creating a plan. And what is important is that this plan looks just like what we developers would do in real life. So it starts, the first task is just initialize the Node project. Uh, the second task is to set up the Mongo database and so on. And the reason for this is that because after each task is going to ask you, the developer, or me in this case, is everything fine? Does it work? Just so we can debug issues on time so we don't have problems later on when the app is fully finished. And at that time, you can commit the changes or so on. All right, so at this point, it actually created a plan on how it's going to implement the first task, and that is initialize the node application. And the first step, so each task is split into steps, and the first step is to do npm init, and for each command, it asks you, hey, can I run this? And so here, I obviously just said, yes, you can, you can uh, run this command. All right, and now it's writing the files. And you can see here, every file that is written is going to open it up so you can see what is actually being written, what kind of files are being saved. All right, so once the task is done, it's going to stop and ask you, hey, can you review this? Can you see if it works okay? And here we'll have a couple of options. You can click the button Start App, and that will start the application that is being built. Then you can test it out, you, or you can just click continue, or you also have a button copy command output. That is, for example, when an error happens, you just copy it and send it to the LLM just so it can start debugging by itself. So now I just go to the browser, check it out how it's working. Welcome to demo video app. That means it's working. So I can just stop the running the app and I can just click continue and it moves on to the next task, which is setting up the Mongo database. So at this point, it actually uh, found a bug. So it asked me, hey, can I run the command npm start? I said yes. But after that, it, uh, the, the, the error happened and the whole app crashed. Now, at this point, it asks you, hey, can I uh, debug this issue? You can see this in the top, uh, top part of the window. And here you can just say yes, it will take the error and it will start debugging. Or you can actually write some more things if you want to add some clarifications or if you want to point it out in a specific direction. But in this case, I just clicked yes, yes, so it continues to, to debug the issue. All right, so now it's finished the debugging process and it asks you again, hey, can I run this command npm start? I just say yes, I just click yes. And there you go, it's actually working. So GPT Pilot debugged this issue by itself, changed the code and implemented what's, what's needed to debug this issue. So at this point, it finished the task three, which was a user registration functionality. And it asked me, hey, can you test this out? And I start the application just by clicking this button. Okay, so I have these uh, mongoose uh, warnings, but I don't care about them for now. We're going to fix them later and i'll just go into the browser and test uh, how it's working 
So I have the, the problem here with the port. It's running on 3001, but I don't like it. And I'll just change it to 3000. And this is the, the one of the main things for GPT Pilot where it's not meant to do everything by itself, but rather it wants you to interact with the code as well. So if you want, you can, you can change things and it will take them into the account. Here I tested, um, this is how the registration works, but it does not work. Every time I click register, it just doesn't, it shows some errors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it, hey, uh, registration is not working. This is something what I'm seeing in the browser console. And uh, based on that input, it will start debugging this issue. All right, so at this point it debugged, I start the app again and I test the registration again. All right, so it seems to me like it's working. So I'll just go ahead and click, click continue. All right, so the next task is the login functionality and I'll just, it's finished. So I just uh, start the app and I try to, to test it out. And here I'll try to log in with the user that I created in the previous step. But what happens is that I have an error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button, copy command output. It will just paste it into the input field and I press enter and it will try to debug it by that output. All right, so at this point, it actually uh, stopped and asked for human intervention. This is how GPT Pilot talks to you. So for example, if you need to add some kind of API key or something that it cannot do, it will ask you, hey, can you help me out uh, and do this? So for example, in this case, it asked me, hey, uh, can you download uh, Bootstrap CSS and JS and just put it uh, in the public uh, directory? But what I'm going to do in this video, I just actually I use the CDN versions and just added it into the head of uh, the pages. All right, so after I copied the CDN links uh, to the head, um, it actually looks much nicer. And again, I forgot which email I signed up with, so I'm just going to register again. After the registration, I'm going to log in again. And there you go, we have the home page as well. So at this point, we have registration and login working fine. And by the way, all these, uh, this entire repository of this application, we're going to put it on GitHub so you can find a link wherever you're looking at uh, this from. And you can check out how the code looks like. It ended up being around like almost a thousand uh, lines of code. It had quite a lot of files, like 15 files or something like that. So it looks really nice, exactly like a real project would look like of this kind of scale. So the next task is actually email verification uh, functionality. And for that, I need to add my email uh, and password. So how I was going to send it. I'm going to use Gmail. All right, so what I need to do is I need to test how this works and I'm going to register so um, that I get the verification email. And it, it tells me like, hey, you, can ver you need to verify your email address. It kind of has a problem with, with Bootstrap, but the email is here. So it's sending the email and it has the verify email link. All right, and the next thing, what I noticed at this point is every time I want to log in, it's telling me that the uh, password is incorrect. And I, I kind of look, look around the code to see what's happening, but I, I don't know um, how should I debug this. Obviously, you can debug anything by yourself, but rather what I, uh, what I decide to do is I decide to um, tell the GPT pilot, hey, I'm having the problem with this, so can you help me debug this issue? Yeah, so I just write, hey, I can register and I get the verification email, but when I try to log in, it tells me that the password is incorrect. All right, and I'm testing it again. And there you go. I get a, a error message. Please verify your email to log in. Now I verify it and I go ahead and try to log in again. And this time it works. So now we have the email verification feature fully, fully developed. Now, I won't go too deep after this. So basically in the video, you can see that I do this over and over again. But what is important is that, you know, many developers don't use like, for example, ChatGPT and many of these AI uh, tools because they don't create the working code. Now, what is important is that when developers, when we work, we, we cannot write code that works from the first try. We need to enable LLMs to, to debug their issues, to, to iterate on the code. And this is what GPT Pilot does. It enables the LLM in the background. We're using a lot of like GPT-4, but you can use any LLM that you want called Llama or, or Entropic uh, or Claude or whatever. And we enable them to iterate and actually work as developers. All right, so after I uh, go through this process, I actually end up uh, testing the, 
the password reset functionality, so you can use that. And after all of that is done, I go and ask GPT Pilot, hey, can you add this functionality for GitHub comparison to the homepage? So whenever user logs in, they can compare GitHub star, just like the star history website. And here I write it, write it down and I'm going to tell it, hey, can you implement this, this feature for me? And actually it goes through this entire process again, goes and writes something, uh, I, I test it out, something works, something doesn't work, we iterate on it and we end, end up with the working uh, code. And there you go, at this point we have the, the GitHub comparison page where you can input two repositories and it can write or change in stars throughout the, the history of the project and compare them on the same graph. So anyway, that's it. I hope you like it. Please let us know if you have any questions, comments, suggestions. We're super happy to hear from you. And yeah, I hope you liked it.